This poster describes the Design for Statistical Process Control end-to-end -end process overview. It is prepared in four sections. The top section is an introduction that describes the Design for Process Control overview. It also describes the benefits of the process as well as sample tools that are used in the Design for SPC process. Section one is describing the critical to quality flow down process with examples. Section two is describing the capability analysis through the process steps. Section three is briefly describing the measurement system analysis. The design for SPC is a cross-sectoral process that connects product design, product integration, and manufacturing in suppliers. It is a proactive methodology that aims to understand and control product variation starting from the design phase. We decided to implement this proactive method because it improves manufacturability and yield, it reduces cycle time and cost, it enables early qualification, and it enables upstream control of variation. There are some basic tools that are used within this methodology. We will explain three important tools in this presentation and poster. The CTQ flow down, the capability analysis, and the measurement system analysis. The critical to quality flow down. SPC is implemented on a limited but meaningful set of parameters, the so-called critical to quality parameters. CTQs are properties whose variation causes significant impact on the variation of the function, performance, or availability of our systems from the perspective of the internal and external customer. Monitoring and controlling the variation of CTQs helps in verifying industrialized product design upfront, identifying unexpected behavior earlier in the product life cycle, distinguishing structural problems from incidents, special causes in the issue resolution. On the poster, you can see the characteristics of CTQs that need to be considered while defining them. At ASML, we benefit from various sources of information to identify CTQs, like domain knowledge, risk assessment, such as FMEA, feedback loop information, and also quantitative data models. FMEA is one of the critical sources to identify variation-related risks and identify CTQs. Especially, we try to link design FMEAs with process FMEAs to link the product to the process through the CTQs at our suppliers. Functional breakdown structure is a perfect way to show this link. On our poster, you might see an example of a CTQ flow down which cascades from system performance to functional requirements, detailed design solutions, and process performance parameters at our suppliers. Here we can clearly show how process variation at our suppliers create an impact on our system performance. Identifying CTQs in different levels of our system, subsystem, and supplier processes ends with a database of CTQs, which we analyze in our CTQ flowdown tooling. Capability analysis. Capability analysis quantifies the performance of a process by checking if the process is actually doing what it should do. At ASML, we measure performance capability by using PPK, a metric that evaluates the process by considering the target specifications on a CTQ defined by the voice of the customer with respect to a certain variation level described by the process. When we do capability analysis based on PPK, we have into account the short-term variation due to the part, module, or machine variation and the variation of the measurement system, but also any other source of variation possibly coming from operators, methods, conditions, or others. The PPK result expresses whether an established process can meet the specifications consistently or not. We use a PPK equal or higher than 1.33 to define a capable process. When PPK is between 1 and 1.33, the process needs to be carefully monitored to identify any deviation. Processes with a PPK lower than 1 require an improvement. Securing performance 
on pilot phase is especially important. At this stage, data is limited, and therefore analysis on predecessors' data provides a source of information about control limits, target mean, and standard deviations. The end-to-end -end SPC process takes into account capability through every step of the design and integration phases, from the top-level CTQs that affect system performance, down to module-level CTQs, and down to component-level CTQs. At all these levels of the design, capability must be evaluated, as well as measurement system analysis must be secured. On component-level, capability analysis and MSA must be implemented at our suppliers as a part of their SPC implementation in the manufacturing process. All the CTQs defined in design must be transferred to the integration phase, must be validated and verified in the first produce. When issues are identified during protophases, phases, they need to be fed back towards the NE function clusters to implement solutions and avoid problems during the production phase. Measurement system analysis. Data accuracy is vital for a successful data analysis. So we need to make sure that there is in place an accurate measurement system. Measurement system analysis has a methodology to qualify the accuracy of the measurement system. In every measurement data set, there is a certain variation. With MSA methodology, it's possible to quantify how much of this variation is coming from the measurement system. The most common way to quantify the measurement variation is conducting a gauge repeatability and reproducibility. In short, gauge are an R study. The correct type is selected based on the measurement procedure and the variation is quantified in proportion to the spec limits. As a result of this methodology, the variation in the measurement system is expected to be low in order to differentiate the measurement noise from the actual measurement parameter.